Welcome to Zoo Babies, where we check out the cutest and cuddliest new arrivals in the animal kingdom. A small army of people were recently sent out to this German zoo to count everything from these pink flamingos to fish and elephants. The flamingos were in fine form, enjoying each other's company and wading about in the water. They spent the day relaxing and showing off their bright feathers. Next up were the fish. The fish counters took a bit longer to complete their job and it's easy to see why. There are thousands of different species of fish in the sea and in fresh water and they're an important food source for people as well as animals. Fish play an important role in cultures too. They act as symbols for various religions and there have been many fish characters in books and movies. Counting the fish is not a problem, but the small fish, of which we have several hundred and different species, counting those by myself is impossible. So I ask a colleague to help. We each count the fish and then we compare numbers. Did you know that all fish are cold-blooded and that they have a backbone? Another interesting fish fact is that there are around 25,000 different species of fish swimming around seas and rivers at this very moment, and there are many that now face extinction. Because fish live underwater, they are much more difficult to study than other animals and plants. That's why keeping fish in a zoo environment, where people can study and watch their behavior, is so important. The elephant keepers, meanwhile, set about measuring these animals with a very big ruler and a piece of long string. The elephants stamp their feet in time with each other and look like they're dancing. We count the present amount of animals and we then check numbers against those in our records. We check their sexes, which animals have been born, which animals have been sold, and which new animals have been born here at Dresden Zoo. There are two types of elephants, African and Asian. African elephants are different from Asian elephants in several ways. The African elephant is typically larger than the Asian elephant and are usually less hairy than their Asian cousins. Over at Hamburg Zoo, there is more animal counting to be done. These large ring-tailed lemurs are hanging out in the field, eating and relaxing. Their diet usually consists of fruit, plants and leaves, as well as insects and spiders. They forage in the snow to see what they can find and don't mind eating the odd bit of snow too. All lemurs have long tails that they use for communicating with each other and for balancing when leaping between trees. The Indri lemur, which is one of the largest living lemurs in the world, is the only lemur that doesn't have a long tail. What about this baby elephant who's getting a checkup from the zookeeper? We all know that elephants have very long trunks and they love to use them for play wrestling and caressing each other. They also use their trunks for showing each other who's boss. A raised trunk can be a warning or a threat, while a lowered trunk can be a sign of submission. They also like to use them to tickle and tease humans. These funny looking creatures are called tapirs. They may not have great eyesight, but they do have an excellent sense of smell and sensitive ears. They eat quite a lot, hence their rather large size, which makes it a little difficult to measure them with a ruler. Lots of zoos have flamingos. They usually roam outside and stand in the pond, but at Hamburg Zoo they're kept in the winter quarters when the lake freezes over. The flamingos like it there, and the visitors can still watch them. 
The inventory compares last year's figures with this year's animal population. The young are weighed and measured to see how well they develop. I wonder how long a flamingo's neck is. These penguins are standing by the pool, wondering whether or not they should go for a swim. One eventually decides to take the plunge and dives into the water. The water is a penguin's natural home. They are hard to spot there because their white belly and black back makes it difficult for a predator such as a bird to see them from above. In South Korea, lots of lucky children got up close and personal with lots of animals and butterflies in Yong-in, south of Seoul. They got to pet and hug a baby bear, a lion and a tiger. Bears are known to be curious and intelligent, and adult bears will generally avoid people. Lions are the only cats that live in groups, which are called prides. Only male lions have manes, the lovely long fringe of hair that encircles their heads. Did you know that female lions are the pride's primary hunters? While tigers are the biggest cats in the world. They live in wet, humid and hot jungles, as well as icy forests. They're different from lions because they like to live alone, except for mother tigers, which stay close to their cubs. They mainly like to live alone because it's easier to sneak up and surprise their prey. Baby tigers don't start hunting food for themselves until they're about one and a half years old. Everyone loved having their photo taken with the animals. Butterflies fluttered nearby, and one of the children got frightened by the baby tiger and began to cry. Baby bears can be very cute and cuddly when they're this size, but can be very dangerous when they grow up because of their big claws. The children patted the lion cub as they sat on the ground in this bright field of red and yellow tulips. They also got to play with the gorgeous baby bear as it ran through the field of butterflies, sniffing the flowers. Although they can look very big and scary, gorillas are actually very quiet and gentle. This mother gorilla is holding on to her tiny baby in a very protective and loving way. The baby's mother tricked us a little this time. Normally we know when to expect offspring and we carry out pregnancy tests. But with her, they were always negative. So we obviously always caught her at the wrong time. So in July, she surprised us with a baby. Mothers normally give birth to just one baby, which will cling tightly to her breast and, like a human baby, develop rather slowly. It will continue to suckle and sleep with its mother until about three years of age. And it will finally become independent and leave her at about four. Gorillas move around by walking on their knuckles and, like humans, have individual fingerprints. Bibi is an experienced mother. She was raised in the group and knows from her own mother and aunts how to raise babies, which is very important for apes. Also, this is the second time she's become a mother, so it wasn't that new for her. Gorillas can live up to 30 to 50 years of age. In the wild, they live in tropical or subtropical forests. Their closest relatives are chimpanzees and humans. A silverback is an adult male gorilla and has a distinctive patch of silver hair down its back. As well as the baby gorilla, a baby zebra was also recently born at Germany's Leipzig Zoo. 
This is a male grevy zebra. Both the baby gorilla and zebra have yet to be named. The zebra foal is staying close to her mother. She gets used to her surroundings. The pregnancy lasted 14 months, a relatively long time. So it's not that surprising that when the babies are born, they weigh between 30 and 35 kilos, quite a chunk. The grevy zebras, which we keep here, one of many zebra types, in my opinion, are the most beautiful. They have the most beautiful pattern, very precise, and all the way down to the hooves. They look like horses, with big, broad, rounded ears, a long, narrow head, a very narrow body, and numerous stripes on their body and legs. Their belly is usually pure white. Grevy zebras enjoy eating grass and foliage. They're the largest of all zebras and are an endangered species. Did you know that a foal can stand on its feet within one hour of its birth and can run with the herd after only a few hours? This gives it a much better chance of escaping from predators such as lions. Baby zebras enjoy drinking their mother's milk and can spend most of their days drinking and grazing. They are white and fluffy and there are three of them. A beautiful litter of white tiger triplets are the latest residents at Argentina's Buenos Aires Zoo. The cubs are only 40 days old, but already they're acting like kings of the jungle. Their unusual color comes from a recessive gene. All white tigers must inherit the white gene from both their parents in order to be white. Their beautiful and rare color makes them very popular with happy snappers. And there's a big crowd who have come to see them. They're white Bengal tigers. It's a genetic expression that occurs every now and again in nature, but it's very rare that they survive in the wild. There are only 250 animals of this kind of the white Bengal tiger in captivity. The cubs are part of the zoo's regular breeding program. Not long ago, the planet was home to eight tiger subspecies. Three are now extinct. The Bengal species is the most plentiful, but like all tigers, their numbers are dwindling. Hunters and poachers kill the animals for their skin and their value on the Asian medicine market. Like all white tigers, these three little brothers also have bright blue eyes. But while they may look small and cuddly, Within a year, they'll grow to around 200 kilograms. And if they were living in the wild, they would be ready to hunt down and kill prey. The zookeeper shows the white tigers off proudly. They're usually found on the mainland of southeastern Asia and in central and southern India. They are slow runners, but are still fast enough to catch any prey in their sights. White tigers are solitary animals and will usually hunt at night. The Chinese believe that those born in the year of the tiger are unusually lucky. When the tiger cubs are returned to their mother, she shows them who's boss and rounds them up so they don't get into any trouble. She looks after them by licking their fur clean and keeping a close eye on them. For now, it's all practice and play and it will be some time before these mischievous cubs will have the tiger by the tail. Halloween is at the end of October and is usually a special time when children collect treats and make pumpkin lanterns. But Halloween is by no means just for humans. Large animals also enjoy pumpkins which is why the elephants in the Friedrichsfelde Animal Park in Berlin get to join in the party at Halloween. The elephants' Halloween dinner is an annual tradition, which is becoming more and more popular. Elephants are the largest animals found on land. Some male elephants can grow up to 13 feet tall. That's more than twice as tall as many human adults. They can weigh as much as a school bus 
They smell, drink, eat and wash themselves with their long trunks. They use them to eat grass, small branches and bark from trees and especially enjoy eating leaves from the top branches. They get the leaves by pushing branches down with their large heads and bodies. The young ones stay close to their mothers at all times and the entire herd will protect the young if there's any sign of danger. But really, who would have thought that elephants would be so keen on pumpkins? There aren't that many pumpkins growing here, but there are a lot for each elephant. So they try to hoard as many of them as they can. They roll them with their feet or their trunks. And some even take one in their trunk, one in their mouth, and kick one along with their feet so that they can get as much as possible. The strongest animals get the majority of the pumpkins, and the smaller animals have to manage with what's left. But with all the crumbs left lying around, they fight over every last pip until they've all had some. He was right. One elephant did indeed walk past with a bit of pumpkin in its mouth while it kicked another one. The pumpkins make the perfect treat for the animals because they are very rich in fiber and have high sugar content, which tastes good as the elephants are chewing. Even if they're not always sure exactly what they're eating. Three more Bengal tigers were born in a feline baby boom at the Puerto Vallarta Zoo recently. The zoo has celebrated the births of nine cubs in the past two months. Two white tiger cubs and one yellow tiger cub joined the zoo's other newborns, two lion cubs and a jaguar. Bengal tigers and jaguars are both endangered species. They get to drink from a milk bottle and then the zookeeper pats the tiger on the back to help it digest the milk. A vet at the zoo says it's an ideal place for the animals. Puerto Vallarta Zoo is located in a beautiful area, as you can see. We give the animals a habitat that is almost completely natural. This means that the animals can breed easily and naturally without any artificial means. All the cubs were conceived naturally. Tourists from overseas have welcomed the chance to see the cubs and to play with them at the zoo. One of the visitors, Thomas Johnson, was overwhelmed by the experience. The cubs came right up close to the cameras, playing with each other and trying to see who was behind the glass. Never, ever. Never. Been to lots of zoos and nothing like this one. Yeah. The zoo allows visitors to play with the cubs, but the zoo's owner, Antonio Castaneda, says it's important to keep safety in mind. The Puerto Vallarta Zoo is in a jungle area on the Mexican Pacific coast. Here, keeping in mind the security of the animal and the security of the visitors, all can be done. They can play with the cubs, they can feed them and see what makes them happy. The Vallarta Zoo is private and funds itself by selling memberships. Mexico City's Chapultepec Zoo has also been enjoying a baby boom. Since the beginning of the year, some 32 animals of rare species have been born here. As well as welcoming four extremely rare Mexican wolves, the zoo is also home to these tiny spotted leopards. Leopards come in a wide variety of coat colors, from a light buff or tawny in warmer, drier areas to a dark shade in deep forests. Lots of flamingo chicks have been born in zoos around the world lately, too. The name flamingo comes from the Latin word meaning flame. Young chicks are pale to white in color, and it's believed that flamingos won't mate until they obtain their pink color. What about this big horn sheep, a species native to North America and Siberia? The big horns on the adults' heads are very large and heavy. 
And over in this other playpen are some naughty little spider monkeys that are having lots of fun swinging on their branches. This rather large liger gives a big yawn and licks itself while a crowd of visitors look on in awe. This is the biggest cat in the world. Ligers are the offspring of a male lion and a female tiger, hence their name, Liger. Ligers can run very fast, faster than most cars on the road. They can even dodge bullets. The only thing that Ligers are afraid of is fire. The people taking photos of this proud and beautiful creature are careful not to get too close. The ligers may have soft fur and cuddly features, but they're very dangerous because of their huge size and strong instinct to fight. With a snort and a hop, three new baby animals were introduced to Argentina's Buenos Aires Zoo. First to come blinking into the sun was a South American tapir, like the one we saw earlier. Although they look like pigs, tapirs are more closely related to horses and rhinoceroses, both of which lived in South America before the last ice age. That's why they have distinct three-hoofed toes, just like ancient horses' hooves. Another of their unique features is their long, flexible trunks. But perhaps the most unusual of the zoo's newborns is this fluffy white wallaby, peeking out from his mother's pouch. These are red-necked wallabies and are normally known for their distinctive reddish patches of colouring on their heads and necks. They're pouch-bearing animals from Australia, and the fantastic thing is that one of them was born an albino. It's very uncommon. It will stay in its mother's pouch until it's fully grown. Born at the same time, another traditional coloured joey gives us a better idea of what the species usually looks like. Have you ever wondered what happens to animals in the zoo at Christmas time? Well, in Australia, they get presents just like everyone else. Not just the baby animals, but the grown-up ones too. At this zoo in Sydney, Christmas came early for these animals when zookeepers filled their enclosures with presents and tasty treats. The zoo's old Kodiak bears, Bethel and Cynthia, received specially prepared custard and fruit pies inside boxes that were designed by the staff at the zoo. The animals were amused by the colorful boxes and sniffed out the treats before trying to tear them open. While the chimpanzees licked a large hanging Christmas colored ice block in the summer heat. Staff of the zoo also designed a special snack-filled Christmas tree for the giraffes, along with apples on stick branches. The special Christmas treats gave the animals a chance to display their food-gathering skills to the big crowd that gathered to help them celebrate. Join us next time on Zoo Babies for lots more chicks, calves and cubs.